Hey guys, do check my style here. Hope you all are doing well. Well, the Fed has the biggest rate hike in 40 years. Five things you need to know about Bitcoin this week. Now, let me read you a bit of this article. I will put a link in the description for you guys to pay attention. Well, to you guys to read for yourself. Bitcoin uh, faces another week of huge macro announcements after the lowest weekly close since July. After days of losses following the latest inflation data from the United States, BTUSD, like or like altcoins and risk assets are more broadly have failed to recover. The largest cryptocurrency has yet to flip 20,000 convincing support and as the third full week of September begins the danger is once again that the level could fracture as resistance. The bulls have plenty to worry about. The coming days will see the Federal Reserve decide on the next rate hike something that will affect the market far beyond more mere sentiment. In addition, the aftermath of the Ethereum merge continues to play out while the defunct exchange and Mt. Gox uh, reimbursements, creditors and other potentials could you know, a potential crowd to the Bitcoin price landscape. Cointelegraph takes a look at five potential market moving factors to keep an eye on in the Bitcoin over the next come over the coming week. So the Fed rate uh, sledgehammer is in focus. The main, event, uh, the main event of this week is in the form of the Federal Reserve's decision on key interest rates. After the consumer price index CPI print of, um, for August came in hotter than expected, the Fed will, under, will be under pressure to respond. As such, the market will now, has now fully priced in a minimum 75% basis point hike from the Fed. Uh, funds rate and it's not discounting the chances of 100 uh, basis points according to the CME FedWatch tool as of September the 19th. Now I don't know much about all this stuff and the graphs and all that kind of stuff but the way I see this yeah they are taking a sledgehammer to crypto they've been trying to get rid of crypto for a long time they want to discredit it for the to the general public and a part of this is like making people um, sell their bags and not hold on to that valuable asset it doesn't matter which one you hold I mean as long as you hold use case crypto like Bitcoin I'm going to come on to Ethan a bit because there's some speculation around that um, and it could not be it may not be well uh, it may not be well for ETH at the, at the, as it stands so anyway the five key areas I want to come on to that Bit because um, spot price sinks after poor weekly close. Well, we, I want to find the five bits they're talking about. Do you know what? Well, I think these are the bullet points they're trying to make here. All right. So let's go. Spike in prices. Spot price. Do, do, do. do you know what? Oh, gosh. Right, the Federal Reserve Open Market um, FOMC is due to meet on the September the 20, 21st and will publish a statement confirming the hike and the Fed support for the uh, figure involved. The Fed will not be easing any time soon and it's classic human nature because now we have a the benefit of knowing how far in the mistakes <laughs> they have made by easing too much. Mike uh, Mac. Globe, senior commodity strategist at Bloomberg Intelligence said in an interview with Kitco over the weekend, risk as asset growth since March 2020 crash has swung way too far on one side. He said that it's now very clear that the reversal will take hold. Now I've heard that crypto will um, crash, I've heard that, but I'm still holding on, I'm not going to let go, I will not uh, um, relinquish my bag, I'm sorry. Crypto, it will figure in the overall market reset, see, market reset, and Bitcoin will ultimately come out ahead, and it will. Macron continue to, uh, Macron, I'm sure, I hope I said it right, continue to be reiterating a long-held theory about the cryptocurrency's future. Gold will also outperform, but but for both pain is, um, per, both pain is first to come. Unfortunately for the Fed, to stop this sledgehammer, risks assets have to make them stop by tightening for by tightening for them, he summarized. Okay, I didn't get that. 
sorry, dyslexia kicked in, but I didn't get that bit, but hey. Um, a 100 basis point move this week would hasten the process, which is now seeing catalysts for central banks beyond the US after they were initially slow to begin raising interest rates to come back. No, well, I didn't, they didn't say interest rate, I'm saying that, but raising rates, so it could mean interest rates to combat inflation. But the more they try and do that, the more, more inflated the market becomes. So I don't, go, I don't get what they're trying to do. I just wish they would stop messing about, let the market do its thing, crash if it has to, and then let it rise from the ashes. You know, a lot of the problem is liquidity, and we don't have liquidity in the market. They keep printing, to, to, to printing debt at the end of the day. Anyway, I'm going to leave a link in the description. You guys can go and read that at your leisure. Because um, I think I might have butchered it up a bit. But you know what? It's me. And it's just me giving out some information. You know, hopefully I'm doing all right. If I'm not, then, you know, it's what it is. But I'll try to do my best. Right. The SEC claims all ether falls under US jurisdiction. In a civil complaint against crypto influencers, the SEC just suggested that it believed the US government has jurisdiction over all Ethereum transactions. And that guess what that could mean? When the, that could mean all, all of, uh, not just ETH itself, but the, smart, the, 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 the chains that use ETH. And there are loads of them in the market. Loads. When the SEC filed a federal lawsuit Monday against crypto influencer Ian Bailey, Bailey, sorry, I can't even say it. Bailiana for the failure to register cryptocurrency as a security before launching 2018 uh, initial coin offering ICO. Uh, everything at first appeared run, run off the mill. The SEC has for years filed um, civil, uh, civil suits against individuals and organizations for rolling out unregistered ICOs. But why take so long? This is 2018. We're now 2021. Coming up 2022. Why did they take so long to roll out these things? And it's part of damaging the market. Eagle Eye Observers then read a little further into the fine print. In bold and potentially unprecedented move buried in lawsuit 69 paragraph, the SEC today claimed it had the right to sue Bolivia, Bolivia, sorry, not only because it is his case concerns transactions made in the United States, but also because essentially the entire <laughs> Ethereum network falls under the US government purview. And I've got another one on ETH. ETH is a security. If it wasn't before, it is now, and that since the merge. Last weekend, last week, the long awaited ETH merge is finally arrived, switching Ethereum from a proof of work to a proof of stake consensus mechanism. So, it, so in fair, it so it so far it appears to have made the switch without major technical problems although it's still early days and will be um, some time before we know for sure the merge hasn't introduced new vulnerabilities as it happened with the 2019 constantinople update okay however the technical vulnerabilities are not the main focus of this article they're going to look at whether Ethereum token is a security. I'll agree that it, it, if it wasn't before, it most certainly is now. <laughs> not good, not good, not good. In the United States, the principal authority on what it, what it, what is and what isn't the security is the Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC). The current chairman, Gary Gensler, said, staking third parties. The stating via third parties could implicate securities laws. State all right, staking services look very similar with some exchanges for labeling labeling to lending, he said. Last Thursday Genza said that the digital currency networks or intermediaries that allow users to stake their coins might be deemed securities using the Howey test. Test is commonly accepted as a way to determine what is and wasn't in the, in the security by examining whether investors expect to return on profit, uh, return from the work of third parties. From the coin's perspective, there's another indication that under the Howey test, the 
invest in public is anticipating profits based on the efforts of others. Gary Gensler said and just said that. Indeed, it would be difficult to argue that e-seekers are doing own any work of their own, whereas proof of work miners do demonstrate work to solve hash puzzles. Stakers merely part their coins and accept the profits to, fo to flow. It is a lot like investing, therefore it's highly likely e theory ETH is now a security. I hold ETH. And I really <laughs> don't know what to say because this 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 whole thing that the, the SEC is doing, and it's not just ETH, you know, it's all the other cryptocurrencies that they've gone after and all the other companies that they're going after. The SEC is is a law unto its own and it's not respecting of the people and it really doesn't want the people to have any any um freedom in this market to do as they choose with their hard-earned cash as it were right another one on ETH and this is really another big one that's hitting and this is all over the SEC bizarre claim about the US jurisdiction over Ethereum in court filing and this is 15 hours ago the Securities Exchange Commission is claiming in court filing still that Ethereum transactions take place in the United States due to the majority of validators being legated in the US but its reasoning may fail to hold up. Okay, see this is a, a different uh, um, way of looking at this. This is suing the crypto YouTuber ERI for making undisclosed promotions of Ethereum based ICO error, um, error crypto project. Sparkesters, okay, Sparkesters in its file in the SEC claim that Ethereum transactions should be considered is taking place in the United States since they are more nodes in the US than in any other country. The SEC has been widely criticised for its regulatory approach towards crypto. New court documents from the Securities and Exchange Commission show that the regulatory claim is uh, claiming that due to the fact that more Ethereum nodes are located in the US, okay, we just read that. The Securities and Exchange Commission filed a lawsuit today, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. If you guys want to go read this, you can go and read it. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Write some good news. Kenya's central bank government admits pressure to convert countries reserves into Bitcoin. Right, and this was two hours ago. Right, central uh, Kenya central bank governor Patrick Norgorge, <laughs> oh, sorry if I said that wrong, has admitted to receiving external pressure from crypto proponents to convert the country's reserve into Bitcoin. According to Nadroge, the idea can be attained, uh, equated to craziness. No, no, but it's probably not a good idea then. And I'm sorry to say it's good news, but it's probably nothing that con. Nothing that conventing the reserves in no craziness. Nothing that converting the reserves into Bitcoin would be a risk considering digital assets volatility, he said during the meeting with members of Parliament on in sep on September nineteenth. He also initiated lawmakers might be under pressure to influence legislative pressure but process in favour of adopting cryptocurrencies. Initially government pointed out that life that if the country was went to Bitcoin way well, during the, his tenure, he would be ready to be he'd be ready to go to prison for it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys to read the rest of it, but this is a this one here is definitely good news. So I didn't really read this one. I just thought, oh great, you know the headlines said you know crypto. Australia Senate a draft bill for crypto regulation details in sight. Now this all this is all from September nineteenth. See how they covered bring these things out really late. I mean, I didn't get to see it until today. Australian Senator uh, Andrew Bragg has drafted a bill aimed at better regulations of cryptocurrencies and other virtual, virtual assets in, in the country. Titled the Digital Asset Market Regulation Bill 2022, the bill provides a licensing system for digital assets exchange and stablecoin issues. Bragg said that Australia must keep pace with the global race for regulation in digital assets. He also he has also released a draft bill that is open for consultation until 31st of October 2022. Andrew Bragg, Senator for New South Wales from okay, the Liberal Party of Australia, who has often spoken in favour of cryptocurrency and called for clear regulatory framework. Licenses for digital asset exchange. The licensing for digital, uh, the digital asset market regulation bill proposes introducing 
license through digital asset exchange of digital assets, custody services, stablecoin issues, in addition to the bill calls for information reporting for banks in case of facilitating E1 in the country. A digital asset exchange or digital asset custody service must hold a license issued by minister or recognised foreign exchange license to operate in Australia. So, in regards to stablecoins, the bill our central digital currency CBDCs issues to um, issuers to similarly get the required license issued in order to operate in the country. Call the stablecoin issue requirements. The, the list of regulations would be mandatory for CBDC issuers to comply with. The bill also works with certain um, designated banks to report information to Australia Prudential Regulatory Authority and Reserve Bank Australia in case of um, facilitating use of the um, availability of the yuan within the last year. It is most noted that the e ones the first CBDC issuer for the major national economy e one has introduced People's Bank of China and Central Bank in 2021. Only a few countries such as China, Bahamas and Nigeria have issued their CBDCs so far. Right, so we're going to CBDC route. Regardless of whether we like it or not, I hope it's not the EU one uh, um, way of doing things because that's a, a command and control um, token, in my view. Um, will that happen in other countries? I don't know. Um, it depends on how much people kick up a fuss, it depends on how it's actually introduced, and all that kind of stuff. And is that. Um, the way that you know the world needs to go, or is it the way we want the world to be, where we're told what to do and not to do at any given time, where to spend your money, not to spend your money, etc., etc. How long you've got to spend your money, what you what you cannot cannot what you can and cannot buy, all those things. I'm not sure. Um, I think people need to wake up, people need to um, start voicing their own opinions um, there will be um, people that will, will want that to say, um, you know, anti-money laundering uh, all the criminal criminal things that go with, uh, with fiat as it is but the same could be said for what the governments will do with this system it's criminal against the people and they can do whatever they want, cause wars whenever they want with their um, with the currencies that they decide to use for themselves within the banking system. So, you know, anyway, I'll leave it there. You guys have a good day and uh, don't get scammed, get regulated. Later, bye.